Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another bonus episode of The Morning Mindset. I hope you're enjoying these bonus episodes as we're looking at the issue of worldview and why it is so important. That last episode, last week on Wednesday, it published the conversation with Stefan Wilson. I thought was just a great conversation. He had so many great points. If you haven't listened to that one, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that one. Now, today we're going to step back into the story of Saul of Tarsus, one of these people who is an example, scripturally speaking, of a person who changed their worldview dramatically. And then we're going to start to see today the effect it had on his life and the impact of his life going forward. Now, to get started today, I want to ask you to think about something you've experienced that you had to see in order to believe it. Maybe it's a landmark or a natural wonder. I remember hearing about Niagara Falls, for example, and the volume of water that goes over the falls and just how massive it is. But until I visited Niagara Falls just a few years ago, I really couldn't believe or even comprehend the vastness of what was being talked about. And to emphasize it even more, my daughter and I went on what they call the Maiden of the Mist boat ride. And you get on a boat and you go in this boat right down to the foot of the falls as it's, you know, tumbling down the side. And you're just soaked. And it's just looking up at this massive wall of water tumbling down towards you. Just an amazing thing. And I couldn't really believe the vastness of that natural wonder until I was actually there and saw it for myself. Another example of something I had to see to believe was I heard of this guy named Richard Turner, who calls himself a card mechanic. And what he means is he is a person who does tricks with playing cards like you might see in a magician's demonstration or something like that. But he says right up front that he's doing it all with tricks and he's doing it all with sleight of hand. And to top it all off, this guy, Richard Turner, is blind. He lost his vision as he was uh, getting just out of high school into college, I think, is when he started to lose his vision. And he is entirely blind now. And I heard about this guy. And so I looked up videos on him and I had to see it to believe it what this guy can do with a deck of cards and how he can fool you all while he can't even see what he's doing. He does it all from uh, feel and from touch. It's just an amazing thing. Now, the reason I'm bringing all that up is because Saul of Tarsus went from seeing the difference that Jesus could make in someone's life and being told about it to actually believing it and becoming a proponent of it. Now, let's recap real quickly. Saul was a zealous Pharisee, which means he was part of a religious sect within Judaism that was stringent about observing the law and stringent about things like blasphemy and not giving men credit for things that God had done. And so when he heard about Jesus and he heard about Christianity flowing out of this belief that Jesus had died and then risen from the grave and was actually the Jewish Messiah— Saul was on a rampage after that. He was eager to stamp out Christianity. So that tells you some of the depth of his worldview about his Judaistic approach to life. In fact, we pick up with Saul in the book of Acts chapter 9 when he is authorized to go to Damascus, a nearby city, to arrest Christians and put them in jail. While he's on that road, he has this encounter with the risen Christ. And Jesus blinds him in a flash of light and knocks him flat on the ground and speaks to him. Saul is then taken into the city and a man named Ananias, who is a disciple of Jesus, is told by Jesus in a vision that he is to go and visit Saul and pray for him that he will receive his sight. And so Ananias does that. Now, some observations we need to make about this quick summary is, first of all, notice Ananias's obedience. He obeyed the voice of his Lord to go to this man who was up until that point his enemy. And he went with boldness and with compassion. He showed care for this man who was once his enemy to pray for him that he would receive his sight. Secondly, 
let's think about what happened there and what effect it would have on Saul. When this guy Ananias, who he's never met, he just comes into the room and he's speaking to him. Saul can't see him because he's blind. And this guy Ananias says, Brother Saul, Jesus, who spoke to you on the road, told me to come and pray for you that you would receive your sight. And so he does. He lays his hands on Saul and he prays for him. And he receives his sight. It says something like scales fell from his eyes. Now, what effect would that have on Saul? To have this experience with a believer in Jesus Christ who comes in and not only does what his master told him, but does so in a way that brings about the power of God into the situation and removes this blindness that Saul was experiencing. You see, everything that Jesus said to Saul there on the road to Damascus was proven true again and again and again. Now we're going to pick up the story in Acts chapter 9, verses 19 through 22. And this is about Saul after he received his sight. It says, And taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus. So he's with other Christians at Damascus. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues. Now the synagogues were the Jewish version of church. It's where they gathered to teach, to listen to teaching, to grow in their spiritual walk as Jews. So he's going into the synagogues and he's saying, picking up again at the end of verse 20, he is the son of God. So he's talking about Jesus. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength, and he confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. So let's pause for a moment in Saul's story and ask ourselves some questions. What is the proof that you can see of Saul's worldview turnaround. Well, first off, he's going into the synagogues, which is a place you might expect a Pharisee to go, and you might even expect him to stand up and begin to teach. But he begins to say something no one expected him to say. Jesus is the Son of God. Now, you can imagine these people who knew who he was and knew what he had been doing were right there. We see it in the passage. And they were astounded. They were just blown away by what he's saying because it's the very thing they would not expect. If someone had told them, Saul, who came here to persecute Christians, has now become a Christian, they might go, really? What do you you mean? And that's something I got to see to believe. And you see, back to that issue of seeing something in order to believe it, you could believe it from Saul because of what happened in his life. This was an extreme flip-flop. I mean, think of the most extreme liberal Democrat you can think of turning into a very conservative Republican or the other way around. I mean, that kind of switch is going to generate some skepticism in the people who are looking on, and it's going to rightly generate some people saying, I'm going to have to see it to believe it. He's going to have to prove it. And that's exactly what happened in Saul's life. He increases in his conviction and his understanding, this passage says. And he even confounded the Jews there in Damascus. Now, what does that mean, he confounded them? It means he gave such convincing proofs to them from the Old Testament scriptures, tying together the prophecies about the Messiah in such a way that when they heard him point those prophecies toward Jesus, they had nothing to say. He's just connecting the dots so that they couldn't argue with it. His, his reasoning and his logic was sound. Now, friends, I want you to think about the appeal of a dramatic testimony like this, of a dramatic conversion and change like this. We've all heard the stories of various people, of, a, for example, a mafia hitman who becomes a believer in Christ, or a hardened skeptic. Uh, Two people come to mind when I think of that one, a guy named Lee Strobel, who was a journalist who was convinced that Jesus was not the Messiah, that the resurrection was false, and he was going to prove it. And as he tried to prove it, he actually proved himself into the kingdom of God. Really amazing. Same thing happened with a guy named Josh McDowell, much earlier than Lee Strobel. Or what about a Muslim cleric or priest 
who becomes a Christian. I mean, when you hear those dramatic stories, it's the contrast. It's the extreme change that gets our attention. And that's what we're looking at when we look at the story of Saul of Tarsus, this dramatic turnaround where he became a person whose change you really had to see to believe. Now, we're going to take a really quick break, but when I come back, we're going to continue talking about what was behind Saul's immediate worldview change. And I think that's where we're going to really begin to see a lot of things that apply in our situation. All right, now speaking of extreme conversion stories, one that has always just arrested my attention is a guy named Charles Colson. Chuck Colson, some people know him. If you're not familiar with Charles Colson's story, you really should look it up. There's some great YouTube videos about what happened in Charles Colson's life. But just to summarize, Chuck was known as Nixon's hatchet man. He served on Nixon's staff, President Richard Nixon's staff, from 1969 to 1970. And he was one of the famous Watergate Seven who were implicated in the wrongdoings that happened at the Watergate Hotel and that whole scandal. And Chuck Colson pled guilty. He pled guilty. He admitted his guilt. He pled guilty to obstruction of justice and went to prison for his part in the Watergate scandal back in 1974. Now, why would he plead guilty? Most people are going to defend themselves and say they didn't do it. But just before going to prison, Charles Colson became a believer in Jesus. And that's what motivated him to be honest about his part in the scandal. And his time in prison and the rest of his life forever changed. You may be familiar with an organization called Prison Fellowship. And you may be even more familiar with a ministry that flows out of Prison Fellowship called Angel Tree. Many churches participate in Angel Tree around the holiday season. And you take the little card off the tree and you buy the present and you put it back under the tree. And then the church sends all those through prison fellowship to prisoners, children on behalf of their incarcerated parent. You see, prison fellowship is an outgrowth of Charles Colson's time in prison. He saw a ripe field for ministry there and he began this organization, prison fellowship and angel tree grew out of that. Well, in time, the Colson Center also began. And the Colson Center exists to help us understand our place in God's story and to serve God with clarity, confidence, and courage. Again, legacy flowing out of this extreme conversion that happened in Charles Colson's life. And that legacy continues even today in another branch of the Colson Center called Colson Educators. You've heard me talking about Colson Educators and their free worldview formation course. Colson Educators has sponsored this series of bonus episodes, and I was eagerly excited to come on board with them and promote this free course because it will help you to solidify your worldview, just like Saul of Tarsus did once he became a believer. He started digging into the connections between the Old Testament prophecies and the New Testament Messiah, Jesus. And he became so convinced, he became a convincing witness to the Jews of his day. You and I need to be able to do the same. And this Worldview Formation course can help you do it. Remember, it's entirely free. It's a video course taught by Stefan Wilson, who you heard from on the last bonus episode, as well as some supplementary things with teachers like Oz Guinness, who are helping us unpack some of the relevant issues of our day. You can find out about this free Worldview Formation course by going to carrygreen.com slash worldview5. And you will find a link to that in the description for this episode. All right, let's get back to our look into the life of Saul of Tarsus. Okay, right before our break, I mentioned we were going to take a look at what was behind Saul's immediate worldview change. What was it that motivated him to make such a dramatic change? Well, first off, and obviously, was his encounter with Jesus on the road. I mean, if you have an experience like that, where the risen Christ shows up to you in all his glory and blinds you, knocks you flat on your back, 
you are going to remember that and that is going to have an impact on you. But also, the fact that everything Jesus spoke to him while he was on that road actually came true. Everything was fulfilled. In addition to that was Saul's experience alongside Ananias, this guy who followed Jesus faithfully and demonstrated for Saul what that looked like through obedience to Jesus, through stepping into a scary situation and yet being obedient all the same. And who knows what conversations and interaction Saul and Ananias had in the days that followed. What we're told in the passage we read today as well, he spent time with the disciples at Damascus. Now, that word disciple means others who are following Jesus. So it wasn't just Ananias, it was all the others in the church who would gather there in Damascus. And Saul is spending time with them. He's seeing the authenticity of their faith. Many of them had probably been Jews just like him and had become believers. Others may have been Greeks or non-Jews who actually had come into faith in Jesus Christ as well, forsaking idols and forsaking the religions of their culture. And you see, what I think we can draw out of this for our sake is to understand there is power in a consistent, committed life. Wouldn't you agree? There's power when you see someone living consistent with their convictions. It's inspiring to you. It's motivating to you. It wells up inside of you this desire to be so committed yourself, right? Belief in others is solidified when they see it in action in us. Isn't that true? When people see us living a consistent life for Christ, consistent in our actions, consistent in our worldview, consistent that what we preach is also what we practice, then the truth of our beliefs, the truth of our worldview becomes convincing to them. It's confirmed in a way that nothing else can do. Friends, one of the ways that people in this world can believe in Jesus is to see the impact he has in our lives. Then they get to see it in order to believe it. This issue of worldview is fundamental to that. Getting our minds around how God views the world and what he has done for humanity through sending his son, Jesus Christ. That's what worldview is all about and the changes it can make in our lives and the lives of those who are looking on, observing our lives, is eternal. Friends, I hope you will check out that free curriculum that Colson Educators is providing. Remember, you can go to carrygreen.com slash worldview5 and sign up for it and begin learning what it means to have a Christian worldview and how that worldview will more greatly and dramatically impact the way you live.